Oh, Babolat, Aero, love it. Yeah. You always use this racket or? I started with this one, yeah, so I like this one. So how long have you been playing all together? Um, probably four months. Four months, but you said you played before, right? And then you it stopped? Was, it was like three, almost three and a half months before, five years ago. And five years ago. It's been a month that I came back. Now, have they given you a rating yet? Uh, not really, I talked to the coach there yeah. and then I was going to play and then he said to play 4.0. 4.0? He said. Wow, okay. When I played back then, I played when I started uh -huh. 3.5. 3.5. Yeah. So, okay. Well, you so definitely so. have the body of a, of a 7.0. <laughs> so, I know that I, have, I need a lot of, I need work. I need okay, we'll that. take a look. Let me take a look, okay? So head back to me. What I really like about your forehand uh, is that you have a really nice finish and really nice contact. You have naturally, you put a lot of spin on there. Well, what's lacking a little bit is range of motion in the back and acceleration. Mm -hmm. So the first you know, five minutes we were playing, if you imagine me hitting here, you stand right behind me, your racket, when you take it back and you go through your um, whole like loop and all that, and then you, your racket goes down and it starts going forward, the racket never really ends up going back. Mm -hmm. It stays here mm -hmm. and then it goes forward. So there's a range of motion problem. Mm -hmm. You're not getting as much range of motion as I, for example. Because when I accelerate from my loop, when I drop my racket down and I go here, my racket ends up going here, backwards. So like I'll show you from this angle. My racket ends up going like that. And I slowed it down a little bit so you can see it. It goes here, yours goes here. And this is kind of a big thing because fundamentally you won't see, you will not see a high level player that it goes here with the racket. And the racket needs to go at least to here. This is the minimum amount the racket needs to go when it goes forward. So that the racket can accelerate properly. It's just not gonna be able to accelerate from here to here. Now, what you talked about before, now I'm seeing the way you hold the racket. The most important thing when it comes to how tight or loose the racket is held is not necessarily what grip pressure you put on the racket. That part should be natural. But if you're holding the racket like this with all the fingers together and the, the, the knuckles parallel to the, the way the grip is going, this is not good because it's gonna make the wrist too rigid. Mm -hmm. So what you gotta do is separate the middle finger from the index finger. You gotta leave a gap there. So now look, your knuckles now, see how they're, they're going on an angle toward in the relation to the grip? That's why I always I do I was watching the players and I was trying to because yeah I didn't know I, yeah I, I've been holding like don't this. go like that so I have to practice then yes so here another thing when you have this separation of the index finger and the middle finger this thumb will settle on the middle finger in here let me see so, there you go and don't be afraid to even go more of an angle to even more angle here like that oh, okay. so the pinky oh, wow. is towards the bottom oh, wow. there you go we have this problem of the racket being too rigid back there yeah. and it's not going too far back enough because you got to realize that the hand has to be positioned like this mm -hmm. so the wrist can move in different positions oh, throughout the stroke okay. if you hold it like this the wrist will be too rigid so it's, like this, bro. Like so it's not yeah so again a lot of people like they think relax is the only solution to that it's actually not so much because i want my players to hold the racket naturally not too tight not too loose However, you, ha you cannot hold it like this because this will uh -huh. restrict the movements of the wrist. Yeah. And now what's most likely happening is not so much the fact that you have a small backswing, but the wrist is more restricted here and it doesn't, it can't go back yeah. here. And I, was, I used to hold like really hard. Yeah. So yeah, it's funny because I didn't know that. I like this. I don't even know if I can hit like this. Let's try it. It's a completely different wrist position. Now the wrist will move a lot more in the back. Good. That's, that's way better. Go again, what? finish, finish nice it all stuff. the way up. You like it? Yeah, it's... It feels different, it's, right? Yeah, it's better. Now you have a semi-western grip, right? Yeah, that, Or yeah, eastern grip. Yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah that's fine. The grip is fine. I know, but just remind yeah. yourself, again, the pinky has to be on the edge. Here, look. That's funny, right? And I'll take a picture of your hand so you, you have it, you can keep it on your phone just to check. See, pinky is on the edge. Uh -huh. Index is spread from the middle finger and the knuckles are on an angle. You see the angle right here? Uh -huh. Yeah. This is no good. Well, I was hitting like, oh, 
Like this, look. Yeah, that's why the racket wasn't going. It wasn't. That's why the racket wasn't lagging properly, like they say. It was not going back here. It was just stuck here on this side because the wrist was locked. And I always watch the guys like the players serve, and I, and I see them holding like this. Like, yes, oh. you have to hold it like that for all your strokes. Okay. The only stroke that you don't hold like that is a one-handed backhand, but we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. A backhand slice, every single stroke that you're going to hit, you're going to hit like that. Much better, come again. Better, come again. Nice one, yes, beautiful job. Go again. Better, like to you like it? it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because now I can feel my wrist kind of loose, you know? Well, you're going to not necessarily know exactly where the racket is pointed here. That ha part happens too fast, but you will feel that there's more movement. It's no, going to feel a little sure. bit different. And I don't feel like, because before I used to feel my, my wrist and everything. Well, it's going to hurt, actually. No, I know. And if your wrist, feel like it's, see, the problem is that the, the most protected position for the wrist is an extended position. So when you go like this, that's, a, mm -hmm. that's like when you do push-ups, that's a pretended, protected position. The weakest position for, for a wrist is like is a is a flex position mm -hmm. or even worse like these ulnar uh, deviation radial deviation those are weak positions exactly. you will hit those positions when you play tennis but not that often the most common position the wrist will be in is a is the extended position okay so when your wrist is like this unfortunately when your fingers are locked here the wrist cannot extend just try it out try to extend your wrist with the fingers locked oh, no. and i try to extend your wrist with the fingers spread see how much higher it goes yeah. So when we hit these areas here, if I had my, my hand locked with the fingers together and I tried to go here, it hurts. Yeah. It hurts like crazy. I can only go to about right here. If I go past here, I can feel it already. Because yeah. I probably have to move the wrist not only in an extended position, but also upwards a little bit. Mm -hmm. So with here, there's absolutely no pain whatsoever. See how natural this is? See, it, can just, it just moves there by itself from the acceleration. There we go. Okay, do it again. It's all right. Put the thumb though, the thumb on the middle finger. Here. Right here, like this, like this. Put it right here, like that. Oh, okay. There you go, that's it. Come all the way around. Nice one, yes. Good, here we go. Best one so far. Ooh, yeah. Nice one. Huge. Nice one. Good, best four here today. Come on. Okay. Oh, Ooh. nice. Ah. Way better, man. Look at that racket moving in the air. Look at that racket moving. It's so much better. Beautiful job. One more time. Come on. This is really an amazing improvement because when we started today, literally, and you'll see it on the tape, your racket was going to about right here. Uh -huh. Now it's going here. Mm -hmm. Do you see how much more pace you get there? Oh, for sure. But it's not only pace, but it's also the way the stroke looks. It looks more smooth, more continuous. It feels better. If, I guarantee you it's more effortless for you. It feels much better. Much, uh, even just the, the, the wrist, like, yeah. it feels like now I have that extension that I didn't have. That. This is fantastic. And oh, yeah. this fixed everything. Now it's correct back here. Mm -hmm. Now what we do need to still change is the amount of rotation you get on the back end of the stroke. Oh, yeah. But you're doing a great job, man. We'll okay. keep going, okay? Okay. I nice the, word. I saw the video. Rakita? <laughs> no, you, with the... Uh, Shamir. It's like, he doesn't know how to do it. This is, don't do this tap. <laughs> I get very angry. You do it with the strings only. That's funny.